my name is Kirti Krishnan. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Cold Spring Harbor Labs. And uh, I work on autism research, specifically Rett syndrome research. Rett syndrome is a neurodevelopmental disorder. It has a very characteristic uh, progression of disease. So until about six months to two years of age, these children develop normally, uh, have uh, language, uh, motor skills, things that all normal kids do. And from about six months to two years of age, they start regressing their developmental um, uh, shift. And that is when you start seeing uh, some of these things that they've learned how to do, uh, speaking or hand movements, purposeful hand movements, all these things go away. Um, and that's one of the main uh, symptoms of this disease. What we use to study um, specifically is a mouse model of this disease. So we use this model to study what is happening in early development. And in our lab, we study these GABAergic neurons. These are uh, uh, neurons in the brain that are considered inhibitory, meaning that they um, affect functioning of the brain uh, by inhibiting electrical activity in the brain. During early development, they are also very important for how the brain forms circuitry. So this is a very important thing that people study called critical period. People have heard about it in terms of language development, for instance. How it's easy to study or learn languages or um, hobbies like music and so on much earlier rather than later in life. And so these are all called critical periods when the brain is able to uh, learn and acquire skills and be able to um, form circuitries in the brain for that activity. And we are actually looking at that early stage in development in mice to see if that's where these, um, this protein, MACP2, actually functions. The reason we're looking at this is because um, the symptoms arise during this time when the pups are trying to integrate the information that's in their environment with what is already happening in their brain. Again, the hope is that since this is a monogenic dis disorder, we are able to find something about how the neural circuitry happens and what happens in this disease, and maybe we can put this in context with other neurodevelopmental disorders as well, like autism, um, schizophrenia, and so on. So I think there's a lot of impact from just studying the basic molecular mechanisms of this disease. The impact from this research can be at multiple levels, not just in disease level, but also in how we understand how the brain works.